with symptoms. So if any patient with uh, any reproductive age comes with symptoms, so we have to rule out uh, pregnancy. Obtain a detailed knowledge of the clinical presentation and management of miscarriage and ectopic pregnancy. So these are the learning objectives of today's talk. Now, what is ectopic? It is a Greek word, ectopos, which means out of place. So ectopic pregnancy is uh, a pregnancy that is uh, implanted outside the uterus. So fertilized embryo is implanted outside the uterine cavity. So uterine cavity is the normal site of implantation. If it is implanted on any other site than a uterine cavity, then it is called ectopic pregnancy that is out of place. This is a uterus. This is the uterine cavity. The, this is the fallopian tube. This is the femoral gland. So what happens? Uh, the sperms comes uh, ascends from the cervical canal into the uterine cavity and then into the fallopian tube. While the ovum uh, is grasped by the femoral end of the tube and it uh, enters the fallopian tube and fertilization takes place inside the tube. And uh, in a normal pregnancy, this fertilized embryo, it will be implanted into the uterine cavity. But sometimes what happens that this ectop this implanted, uh, sorry, this fertilized embryo, it does not go into the uterine cavity. It uh, stays in the fallopian tube. It either goes out of the uh, fallopian tube into the abdominal cavity or it uh, by bypasses this uterine cavity and goes to the cervix and implanted over there. So this is how the fertilized egg is implanted in the fallopian tube and not in the uterus. So this is the classification of ectopic pregnancy. It may be a tubal pregnancy, which is in more than 95% of the cases. It may be in the ovary, ovarian ectopic. It could be uh, abdominal ectopic pregnancy or in the cervical canal. So these are the four sites where this um, fertilized uh, egg is implanted. So uh, uh, according to the implantation site, ectopic pregnancy is divided into intrauterine and extrauterine. In intrauterine, it is the coronal pregnancy or the cervical pregnancy. Coronal pregnancy is less than 1% and cervical pregnancy is 0.4%. And in case of extrauterine, which is outside the uterine, uh, cavity is tubal, more than 95%, ovarian, very rare, 0.5%, and abdominal, 0.1%. So in uh, a tubal pregnancy, ampulla, ampullary pregnancy is 64%, and the isthmus is 25 and in the infandibulum, 9%, and interstitia is 2%. So tubal pregnancy is further uh, classified according to the site of the implantation inside the tube. As you can see over here, this is the cervical pregnancy. This is the interstitial, that part of the tube which passes through the uterine uh, wall. Interstitial. Uh, this is the isthmus. This is uh, ampullary. And this is the infantibular uh, pregnancy. And this is the ovarian tube. As you can see over here, this is another uh, picture showing a topic. So this is the femoral end of the tube. And here you can see the baby is growing inside the tube. Here, this is the femoral uh, fallopian tube. And it is dilated. It has the gestational sac inside it. This is also the cut section of the tube, which shows uh, the embryo inside the uh, fallopian tube. 
this is uterus and this is the fallopian tube and this is the interstitial abdomen that part of the tube which passes through the uterine wall so this is the interstitial abdomen now what are the factors which contribute towards the uh, ectopic pregnancy so there are various factors which are responsible for uh, ectopic gestation uh mechanical factors related to the fallopian tubes are congenital the tube may be long narrow diverticular and accessory ostrea traumatic any operation of the tube as salpingoplasty and a tubal reversal after the tubal ligation it may uh lead to ectopic gestation any inflammation chronic salpingitis any tumor which may lead to the narrowing of the tube that is a fibroid or a bronchial tumor functional uh, as tubal spasm or anti peristaltic contractions endometriosis in the tube encourages uh, embedding of the fertilized ovum other risk factors include any history of tubal surgery as i told you reversal of tubal sterilization or previous history of Uh, salpingostomy, history of pelvic surgery, any surgery on the pelvic organs, history of sexually transmitted diseases such as chlamydia infection, history of artificial reproductive techniques. Any previous ectopic may lead to recurrent ectopic pregnancy if it was managed conservatively. Smoking or advanced maternal age, it causes functional alterations in the tube. IUCD in place at time of conception. If uh, the patient has IUCD, it may favor ectopic gestation. Endometriosis it distorts the tube. Conception and all uh, contraceptives and morning after birth, all they may be due to uh, may lead to ectopic gestation. So these were the risk factors which uh, contribute towards the which uh, contributes towards the uh, ectopic gestation. so this uh, figure shows uh, sorry this picture shows uh, pid this is uterus this is the fallopian tube you can see over here it is dilated this fallopian tube is dilated over here and you can see these are the adhesions these flimsy adhesions with the uterus of uh, this is bowel and uh these additions are also present steril so pelvic inflammatory disease leads to the formation of additions and these additions they cause distortion of the tubes this uh, you can see over here this is uterus cervix fallopian tube and this is fallopian tube. so these are the additions these this this and this these are the additions which restrict the mobility of the tube Now, tubal surgery. As I told you earlier, that uh, reversal of sterilization it may uh, lead to uh, ectopic gestation. Why? Because uh, you can uh, uh, maintain the tubal potency, but the functional uh, capacity of the tube is not restored. The cilia are damaged at the site where there is a uh, surgery is done at the site of surgery. and so what happens the fertilized egg get arrested at the site of this uh, surgery because of the lack of ciliated epithelium over this area so that's why it lead to ectopic gestation so once uh, there is ectopic pregnancy what will be the outcome either uh, it will start growing inside the uh, fallopian tube and ultimately it will rupture or this uh, uh, ectopic uh, pregnancy it will be aborted by the fimbrial end of the fallopian tube into the peritoneal cavity so this is tubal abortion and thirdly what happens that uh, this um, uh, fertilized uh, uh, egg is extruded into the abdominal cavity into the peritoneal cavity 
where it get implanted uh, and derives its nourishment uh, from the either the gut or the vestibule of the uterus and the baby fetus starts growing over there so this is secondary abdominal pregnancy so there are three outcomes either tubal abortion tubal rupture or secondary abdominal pregnancy so this uh, is uh, showing tubal abortion a topic gestation is aborted through the femoral end into the fetal cavity so this is tubal abortion as you can see over here the whole of the uh, sac along with the blood is extruded out into the peritoneal cavity tubal rupture the tube got ruptured at the site of the abdominal gestation due to the expansion of the uh, developing fetus this is the laparoscopic picture showing a uh, ruptured ectopic pregnancy this is uterus this is the fallopian tube and it is ruptured and there is clotted blood over here along with the conceptus this is called power exoperitoneal rupture or rupture through the floor of the tube it may lead to broad ligament hematoma with the death of the ovum or intraligamentary uh, pregnancy so this is intraligamentary pregnancy you can see this placenta and this is the conceptus second abdominal pregnancy it is extruded <coughs> this is the uterus expelled out of the fallopian tube into the abdominal cavity and the baby starts growing into the abdominal cavity <laughs> again this is the fetus growing into the abdominal cavity and the placenta gets attached either to the bowel or the vestibule of the uterus so how the patient with the topic pregnancy will present so there is a triad of symptoms there is a uh, uh, amenorrhea there will be history of amenorrhea short amenorrhea with uh, abdominal pain and vaginal bleeding so these symptoms triad of symptoms if any patient has you must rule out ectopic pregnancy if you cannot see intrauterine pregnancy so um, if it, there is unruptured pregnancy uh, what you will find there will be history of amenorrhea she will have dull abdominal pain uh, present in uh, at the site of the ectopic pregnancy so if it is on the left side of uh, left side ectopic pregnancy then it would be in the left iliac fossa it is due to distension of the tube and stretching of its peritoneal cavity so what this pain occurs the tube starts distending and the peritoneal cord is stretched and it will lead to the pain if uh, on a pelvic examination you will move the cervix it will be very painful so this is called cervical motion positive and there will be endonexus and tenderness also when we do abdominal examination there will be tenderness in one iliac fossa and on vaginal examination i have already told you there will be cervical excitation or cervical motion positive with tenderness in the uh, adenexa a mass may be felt to one side of the uterus it is very tender soft and may be pulsating subacute type what will be the symptoms short period of amenorrhea and 25% with no history of amenorrhea due to occurrence of post conception bleeding that was taken as a true menstrual period pain she will have pain in one iliac fossa it may be dull uh, aching or sharp stabbing or colicking fainting attacks or even shock may occur and vaginal ble bleeding occurs after the pain if there is ruptured ectopic pregnancy what will happen there will be symptoms of acute abdomen tense and tender abdomen with rigidity and guarding uh, a pa patient will be pale extremely pale there will be shoulder dip pain uh, due to the irritation of the uh, diaphragm and fainting attacks you will have some history of simple attacks and she will may be in the shock so what is the dd differential diagnosis 
इट मे बी गायनाकोलॉजिकल और नॉन गायनाकोलॉजिकल इन नॉन गायनाकोलॉजिकल इट इज अपनाइटिस इक्विपेंटाइटिस माइकार्डन इन्फेक्शन पेल्विक एप्सिस स्प्लैनिक रैप्चर और परफरेटेड गैस्ट्रिक ड्यूटनल अल्सर्स दे विल ऑल लीड टू एक्यूट एप्ट गायनाकोलॉजिकल डिसऑर्डर्स इंक्लूड सेप्टिक अबॉर्शन थ्रेटन अबॉर्शन और थ्रेटन मिसकैरेज बायोसेल्पिंग सेल्विक एप्सिस टॉर्शन ओवेरियन सिस्ट acute uh, pid it will lead to pain rupture of the follicle or corpus luteal cyst uh, if there is corpus luteal cyst it gets uh, ruptured it will uh, mimic the signs and symptoms of uh, topic pregnancy or if there is degenerating fibroid uh, when there is degeneration uh, in the fibroid it will causes pain retroverted gravity uterus will also lead to uh, pain so what uh, investigations uh, are performed after taking a detailed history and examination uh, we will send for transvaginal ultrasound ultrasonography serum beta hcg and hemoglobin that is full blood count uh, with group and safe as she may uh, if it is disrupted of topic she may need blood so blood for that beta hcg uh, has a discriminatory zone if it is uh, it is the lower limit of hcg at which an examiner can reliably visualize pregnancy so if it is a transvaginal scan we can visualize pregnancy uh, it is uh, at the level of 1000 to 2000 information per liter and on trans abdominal scan the beta hcg should be 5000 to 6000 national units so this is the discriminatory zone at which we can visualize the uh, pregnancy on ultrasound if the beta hcg level is above the discriminatory value and there is absence of uterine pregnancy it signifies an abnormal pregnancy ectopic or incomplete miscarriage and if the beta hcg levels are below the discriminatory value serial beta hcg and ultrasound should be done to reach the diagnosis so if it is high and there is no intrauterine pregnancy then it means that there is pregnancy it could be ectopic or it could be incomplete uh, miscarriage and if beta hcg is below the discriminatory level then we have to do serial beta hcg levels and ultrasound to reach the diagnosis uh in normal pregnancy what happens there is doubling of the beta hcg a 66% or greater increase in serum beta hcg levels should be observed every 48 hours so after every 48 hours there is a uh, doubling or more Uh, in the beta hcg levels in appropriately rising uh, beta hcg levels suggest an abnormal pregnancy an abnormal pregnancy which may be an ectopic pregnancy or it could be a failing uterine pregnancy this is the transabdominal scan you can see this is the transabdominal uh, trans scan uh, trans tubular and you can see this is the intrauterine pregnancy this is uterus uterine cavity and this is the fetus here also this is the uterine cavity and inside there is a gestational sac with this yolk sac this is tvs tvs is transvaginal this probe is uh, elongated and it has better resolution than uh, transabdominal scan because of its close proximity to the uterine cavity so we can uh, see into uterine pregnancy earlier than transabdominal scan if you are doing transvaginal scan as you can see over here this is the uterine cavity and this is the yolk sac and this is the cavity now pregnancy of unknown location pu PUL. It means the patient is pregnant, but we cannot visualize the site of pregnancy. 
pregnancy test is positive, beta SSG is there, but we cannot localize where the pregnancy is. So this is called pregnancy of unknown location. 40% of topics is not diagnosed on first visit and labeled as pregnancy of unknown location. Uh, in EUL, there is empty uterus with no adenoxyl mass on TVS with positive pregnancy test. So we have what we have to do. We have to do serial beta HCG estimations. Uh, we will repeat beta HCG after every 48 hours and we will see the rise, rising trend. If it is doubling or more than 66% rise, then it is a normal pregnancy. And if it is not, then it is either a topic pregnancy or it is a failing intrauterine pregnancy. Endometric biopsy occasionally helpful if HCG is static. So all uh, uh, pregnancy funnel locations must be investigated to determine the site of pregnancy. This is the ultrasound. As you can see over here, this is uterus. This is a ovary. And this is left ovary. And this is the ectopic gestation, ectopic pregnancy outside the uterine cavity. So there is a, a double rim mass with a, a embryo inside. So empty uterus and adenosyl mass showing ectopic gestation. Same here. This is empty uterus with endometrial lining and this is the ectopic adenoxyl mass containing the top tissue. Now how we will manage? So uh, we have taken the history, we have examined the patient by a joint physical examination, by an abdominal examination and by a channel examination. We ordered for investigations that for transfer channel scan, uh, serial beta HCG levels, and uh, CBC along with group and say. Now, what, how we will manage the patient? There are three types of management. Either we can uh, do expectant management, medical, or surgical management. So there are different criteria for these three types of uh, management. Uh, all patients cannot fit into uh, all these um, managements. So we will discuss one by one expectant management that is conservative we are not doing anything we are only observing the patient so what is the criteria for selection of the patient for conservative management the patient will be uh, asymptomatic there will be no evidence of rupture or hemodynamically uh, instability there will be uh, less than 100 ml fluid in the pouch of douglas on ultrasound uh, HCG level will be less than 1,000 international unit per liter at initial presentation. And the uh, next cell mass is less than 3 centimeter. And the patient must be compliant. It is very um, necessary that the patient should be compliant because it needs a regular follow-up. And she must be willing to accept the potential risks of tubal rupture. So this is the criteria for selection of the patient for expectant management. So uh, during expectant management, what we are doing, we are only monitoring. We are monitoring the patient. So initial follow-up twice weekly, we will do beta HCG. Weekly transfer to an ultrasound. But the first week, a drop in uh, HCG level uh, should be there. And we will also assess the technical mass size, either, either it is increasing or decreasing. Otherwise, reassess the other options, medical or surgical. If the fall of beta HCG, and there's reduction in the size of the next cell mass satisfactory, then we will continue conservative. Weekly HCG and transmitter ultrasound till the HCG falls below 20 international units. Now, medical management. How we will do medical management? There is a topic pregnancy, patient has uh, been diagnosed as a topic pregnancy. So how we will treat her medically? So there is also a criteria for the manage, uh, medical management. 
selection criteria which patients they require uh, medical management they can be given medical management they are hemodynamically stable there is no hemoperitoneum there is no fetal cardiac activity in the fetus uh, fetal uh, full blood count urea electrolytes is lfts and rfts they are normal an exclusion criteria those patients which are not fit for medical management any patient with hepatic dysfunction or they have thrombocytopenia little count less than 1000 or they have blood dyscrasias uh the ectopic mo- uh, to mass is more than 3.5 cm or if there is cardiac activity in the ectopic pregnancy so these are the exclusion criteria or these are the patients which will not uh, be fit for medical management so inclusion and exclusion criteria so medical management is done either with methotrexate or uh, which is given im systemically or local injections of uh, prostaglandins potassium chloride and hyperosmolar glucose and local methotrexate in in the uh, ectopic uh, pregnancy sac so these are the local injections which are directly injected into the sac the best candidate is uh, a woman who is asymptomatic she is compliant with the follow and the which beta hcg level is less than 5000 international unit so there are certain contraindications in which methotrexate cannot be given if the patient is breastfeeding she is immunocompromised uh chronic liver disease if she has active pulmonary disease or active peptic ulcer or colitis that disorders hepatic renal or hematological dysfunction so such uh, patients who have these problems uh, they are not given methotrexate so methotrexate is given if the it fits the criteria selection criteria there is caudal pregnancy or there is a persistent trophoblastic tissue uh, or there is a patient has only one fallopian tube or the patient refuses surgery ectopic gestation in which the trophoblastic is, is is adherent to the bowel or bladder so in case of abdominal pregnancy in which the ectopic pregnancy is adherent to the bowel or bladder the signs of treatment failure how we will know that we have given the methotrexate but uh, yeah, the patient is not responding significantly worsening abdominal pain the abdominal pain will increase or she may go into hemodynamic instability the level of beta hcg uh, does not decline at least 15% between day 4 and 7 post treatment or uh, beta hcg level is rising or plateauing after the first week of treatment follow how we will follow her up methotrexate we have given to her and we are now monitoring her so we will follow her up at a uh, day 4 and day 7 we will send beta hcg and on every visit we will ask about the symptomatology any pain any bleeding and we will do beta hcg on day 4 and 7 and then repeat after every 48 hours and if the beta hcg level is not declining or it is plateauing or increasing then we have to evaluate the patient for second dose of methotrexate uh, either methotrexate second dose or we will go for surgery so surgical management will be either laparotomy or laparoscopy so surgical management there are two options either laparotomy which is over conventional way or laparoscopy so uh, we can directly go for surgery if the patient is not suitable candidate for methotrexate or uh, the medical therapy has failed or the patient has a heterotopic pregnancy with a viable intrauterine pregnancy or she has a heterotopic pregnancy with a 
Heterotrophic means she has both intrauterine and tubal. Then we will go for our uh, surgical treatment. The patient is hemodynamically unstable and needs immediate treatment, like the disruptive abdominal pregnancy. She will uh, present with acute abdominal. So either laparoscopy or laparoscopy, it depends upon the facility available and the expertise. Laparoscopy is the gold standard. Uh, it has uh, become the recommended approach. Laparoscopy is usually reserved for patients who are hemodynamically unstable, with coronal ectopic pregnancies are for surgeons inexperienced in laparoscopy. So this is the laparoscopic view. This is uterus. This is the fallopian tube, which carries the ectopic gestation. As you can see over here, this is the swollen tube with the ectopic gestation. So what is the advantage of laparoscopy? It has less interoperative uh, blood loss, shorter uh, operation time, shorter hospital stay. It has lower energetic requirement, less energy is required. Feature intrauterine pregnancy rate is the same, and lower repeat ectopic pregnancy rate. So this is the benefit of laparoscopy. The patient has less stay in the hospital, and less operative time and uh, less uh, energy screen and less glucose. So there are two uh, procedures which are done on the uh, screen. Either self-endoctomy or self-endoctomy. Self-endoctomy or self-endoctomy is done in the procedure. You can see over here. There, this is the topic we can see in the tube. We will give uh, an incision in on the uh, tube and we will try to expel the components of the tube. This is a video or certain This This procedure is offered in those patients uh, who decide to conserve the tube. And they are hemodynamic, stable, and tubal resilience is accessible. They are unruptured and less than centimeter size and control to control activities either can assume for me. So this is structures. And this is the lecture to be shown the So what we do we will do step into a study. And then see you know that you can tell you and self injection. Self injection is the removal of the tube. Self injection is making a hole in the tube and try to expel all the contents of conception. And self injection is removal of the tube. We remove all the vegetation, all of the tube. The fact that tube is removed in another must be as the end Let drop me when you do your abroad, if the patient is similar and stable, there's no and the facilities are available. If the mass is available, the first time it is available, the problems should be able to shock, and there's no need for that. So, we have to We can either do self injection or we do uh, an incision on the antigen cell that we call the Now, management plan of a topic. Patient comes with the symptoms, but you will do. You will do pregnancy tests. If it is positive, uh, you will see if she has drug down pain or pregnant baby. Or she has, if she is asymptomatic, with that is for a time. We will take a detailed history and we will make an examination. 
Egg oil history, she is short of days and she has a good cycle. And the memory is more than six weeks. Then we have transfer nutrition. And if she's unsure of dates and uh, irregular cycle, then we have to do beta HCG. If beta HCG is less than 1000, so it may be early pregnancy or early. If it is more than 1000, then uh, we use the protocol for suspected topic. Empty uterus or ultrasound if it is empty uterus or free food in the blood test or there is an adenoidal mass along with BKCG more than 1000 means that G is a candidate for the So how do we manage? If she meets the criteria for negative fate, then we will use uh, the then we will uh, go to surgery. That is laparoscopy or laparoscopy. Now, counseling. Such patients they need her good counseling because uh, she may have the current of the topic. So we must counsel the patient regarding the uh, uh, current situation so as to avoid the future problems. So what they are told, do not use IUCD or POP progesterone because they favor the problem. Use very method of contraception. Uh, if there is PID, take the treatment, follow by HCD, that should disappear after one month. And do a history of setting your address of what this is the best way to do with the transfer of the data menu history. This is how we will counsel all the patients that should be brought, that they should be brought to the hospital as soon as they leave the center. So that about the patients, uh, of such patients, such of such patients. We will be recurrent on the topic in fertility, we have a fertility, the tumor rupture, and maybe to up and down, psychological upset, or uh, complications of the surgical treatment. And so these are the complications. So whenever uh, there is a topic pregnancy, and if the patient is allergic and husband then what we should do. This is immunization can occur after early pregnancy. So all our respective women have a certain procedure to manage topic gestation. Uh, they should be offered injection and DD, 50 micrograms within 72 hours. And DD may not be required after medical treatment, but guidelines differ and preferences is often given. So, in all these cases, we have to give injection and TD in case of atomic frequency in the dose of 15 micrograms. In the dose of 15 micrograms. Thank you very much. So, if you have any queries or any questions, you can ask. So, I will ask if you don't have. So we will repeat a topic pregnancy. A topic, a topic is a Greek word which means out of place. So a topic pregnancy means the pregnancy which is outside the uterine. So what are the main sites of the topic pregnancy? These are uh, intrauterine and extrauterine. Intrauterine may be uh, interstitial pregnancy or it is formal pregnancy. Formal pregnancy is a pregnancy which is a formal pregnancy. Or surgical pregnancy. Extra uterine are the sites in the pure end of the waking uh, cavity and so these are the sites where the topic decision can take place. So how we should be present? We should be present with a uh, missed period may or may not. She may be having missed period or she may not be having missed period with pain, abdominal pain and general pain. So, 
This is the tide of entrance. Next period, that is amenorrhea, which may or may not be present along 15, 15 and 13 years. So, and when we examine such a patient, uh, she will uh, be having tachycardia. And after a problem examination, she will have uh, abdominal tenderness and rigidity if it is after a proper pregnancy. And even uh, in the final examination, there will be cervical excitation, cervical tenderness, and there will be abnormal uh, mass on pelvic examination. The investigations which are required, they are transvaginal ultrasound, PTHCG, serial. And uh, good blood clone with blue pencil because we require blood to take up the proper pregnancy. So these are the investigations which are done uh, for her. And uh, so how we will manage the patient? So there are three uh, types of management: second management, medical management, and medical management. And there are certain criteria for all these patients. So for ectopic uh, pregnancy, uh, the criteria for expected management is efficiency, hemodynamic spacer, the uterus is less than 1,000, the third is about your breakfast is less than 100 and ectopic mass is less than 300. And there is a fetal If the patient fits this criteria, then we can go to the facility management. And during the management of the we are only monitoring. We are monitoring the patient by a VTCG, by the symptomatology, VTCG, and transgenomic. VTCG is done after every 48 hours, and transgenomic is If the VTCG is uh, falling, uh, and on other songs, the mass is regressing, then the treatment is successful. And if it's not, then we have to switch it over to the uh, medical management or surgical management. Uh, regarding medical management, we are using medical injections, which are given systematically by the IM. IM is different. And there are local uh, uh, injections, intersect injections, of such as the right hand of course. Uh, uh, or nutritive uh, intersect injections. So these are the local injections which are going to be sad. The criteria for um, medical management is uh, uh, the section criteria. The patient is less than 5,000 and the uh, patient is compliant. She uh, knows that she has to come for the regular follow up, she must be smart. And uh, uh, she has no uh, liver disease or kidney disease. Then we can give her a If she has a uh, liver disease or renal disease, then we can give her a So um, after giving the injection, we monitor the patient with symptomatology, obesity, on day four and seven. Injection and transplant. If the beta is falling and the mass is regressing, then it is okay. If it is not falling or the mass is not regressing, then we have to switch over to the other option, that is the surgical option. And surgically, you already know that there are two options laparoscopy and laparotomy. And the procedure that we do uh, surgically is either serpentinotomy or serpentectomy. Serpentinotomy or serpentinotomy is that we give an incision over the tube and we extend the contents uh, without serpentinotomy from here and leave the tube over there. If you have removed the tube, you only leave it here and only extend the contents. While on certain Japanese, we remove the whole thing. So uh, this is uh, all about uh, about it, the topic of pregnancy and its management. So any patient who comes in the reproductive age group with pain, vaginal bleeding, and hysterpheumonia, the first thing in your mind should be you should do pregnancy. 
if uh, it is not available, we will go for, uh, or if I feel it is irregular or should search for a page, then we will go for P capacity. And we are doing P serial capacity. Normally, what happens, the beta CT it doubles. Or there is a 66% rise in the beta CT after 48 hours. It is in the normal frequency. If it does not happen, then it means either it is a profit situation or a failing in the So, thank you very much. <laughs>